Our final speaker before the beer break is a doctor, science communicator, storyteller, nerd, cyclist, science busker, and syndicated medicine and health columnist for CBC. Please welcome Dr. Raj Bardwaj. We're gonna do all of biochemistry in six minutes and 40 seconds. It's gonna be awesome. Okay, for realsies, here we go. A nurse waved me over as she handed me a chart as I started my night shift. Can you go see this next guy? Steve, not his real name. It, uh, he looks pretty uncomfortable. It was a pretty you know, typical busy evening. Steve had arrived by ambulance uh, an hour ago complaining of abdominal pain that had started that evening. So I took the chart, I knocked on the door, and I introduced myself as I stepped into his room. Hi, Steve. I'm Raj, I'm one of the doctors who's working tonight. I'll be taking care of you. Tell me your story. Steve told me the same vague story that he'd told the triage nurse. He had some abdominal pain, started while he was watching TV, kind of started, got worse. Now it was coming in waves. No fever, no nausea, no vomiting, no diarrhea, no heartburn, no recent travel. Never had anything like this before. As Steve told me his story, I was building a mental list of possible causes for his pain. We moved on to the physical examination. Everything seemed pretty normal. No signs of jaundice, no fever, no dehydration. His abdomen was tender, more on the left than on the right, more lower down than higher up. One of the more uncomfortable, unpleasant uh, parts of a doctor's job is to sometimes do a rectal exam. <laughs> It can reveal microscopic amounts of bleeding, sometimes more than microscopic amounts of bleeding in the bowel, as well as potentially dangerous tumors or, or polyps. As I told Steve that this was gonna be the next step, he gave me that uncomfortable look that all of you guys are giving me right now. But then Steve uttered the words that gets every doctor's and nurse's spider sense tingling. He said, Doc, you're not gonna believe this. So I took off my gloves, I sat down, and we started over. No problem, Steve. Tell me your story. People often ask me, why did I go into medical school? Why did I want to be a doctor? There's the usual stuff. I like working with people. I like helping them if I can. Uh, the human body is fascinating. But for me, it's more than that. It's about communication. It's about understanding your stories. It's also about caring about you while I care for you. This is Sir William Osler, a famous Canadian doctor. He told his students, listen to your patients. They are telling you the diagnosis. I would add, listen to your patient because that's the first step in caring for them. The problem is these days, people's stories get lost. They get hijacked by Google or WebMD where you type in stomach pain and you get a list of diagnoses from cancer to snake bites. I get that you wanna look up your symptoms to make sense of your own story, especially if you've ever left a doctor's office thinking that you know they didn't really understand your story. And next time you go in, you wanna go in with a diagnosis rather than a story. But the diagnostic tools available on the internet are blunt instruments compared to a thoughtful, knowledgeable, caring human. They prompt you to describe your pain, but you know what if it's not dull and achy? What if it's not sharp and stabbing either? What if you know, there's something different. And there's also no way to give it context, to tell it that, you know, your mom was diagnosed with ovarian cancer in her 40s, and that's got you scared as hell because your periods are changing, and now you've got a stomach ache. And sometimes, in the rush to get to treatment, to get to the next patient, we doctors don't take the time to make sure we've got your story right. Sometimes we hear the beginning and think, oh yeah, I've heard this one. This is the one about the guy with the fever who ends up having strep throat. Here's some antibiotics, see you next time. Doctors need to listen to the stories that our patients are telling us. Not interrupt, not assume, not judge. And patients need to be willing to own their stories and share them with us. Not make up stories of abdominal pain that started while they were watching TV, because they're afraid of being judged. 
Steve explained to me that he was coming out of the shower between a softball game and going out with some friends, and he was in a rush, so he dumped his equipment bag on the ground in the bathroom, and because he was in a rush, he got out of the shower, maybe he was still a little bit soapy when he stepped out, and then he slipped on the wet bathroom floor. And I guess one of the softballs had just rolled out of the bag, Steve said. My feet went out from under me, and then when I landed, the ball went right up my butt. Seriously, Doc, it was a one in a million thing. So anyway, I figure that's what's causing my pain. I don't know how much you guys know about physics or plumbing or softball, but let me assure you, this cannot happen. You cannot fall on something accidentally slipping and, and have it accidentally go up your butt. This version of the story was closer to the truth, but, you know, I didn't need any more information. <laughs> Thanks for telling me your story, Steve. I just want to help you feel better. Steve never told me his real story because he did not want to be judged or ridiculed. And I don't want you to think that that's what I'm doing now. I'm not. The I, I slipped and landed on something and it went up my bum is so common in medicine that it's practically a cliche. All because people let their story get away from them, because Google, because anxiety, because fear. Now, it turns out it's awfully hard to get a non-compressible sphere four-inch diameter out from a person's rectum without causing even more damage. So we sent Steve to the hospital, and the surgeons opened him up and took out part of his colon. But I try to remember stories like this when I'm feeling rushed and I'm tempted to blow by a person's story and jump to the diagnosis and the treatment. I try to remember, listen to your patient, they're telling you the diagnosis. Listen to the patient, because that's the first step in caring. There's a bargain, an understanding in the doctor-patient relationship. You speak your truth. You don't hide. I listen. I do not judge. Together, we move forward in medicine and maybe in life. Thanks.